start seem to be putting their boardroom troubles behind them, justifying manager Billy Horner's major summer clear-out. But Cyril Knowles was soon to find out that Darlington's impressive form counted for little in a local derby. Hartlepool were the more tenacious side right from the start, with Mark Taylor's persistence forcing Barber to scramble this shot away. In an aggressive first half, the Quakers too had their chances. Mitch Cook's run and cross found Carl Airy, but his effort bounced off the bar. It was Les Mutri, though, who swung the game Hartlepool's way from Roy Hogan's pass to make it 1-0 after 38 minutes. They could have gone further ahead soon after if Barry Wardrobe had made better use of this chance, but he failed to hit the target. Local pride kept the match temperature positively Mediterranean. When John Hanna tried to dismantle Hogan and earned a booking, Cyril Knowles bravely decided to pull him out of the action himself before the referee did. In the second half, Darlington took control, leaving Paul to appreciate the experience and the legs of new keeper Alan Stevenson. Stevenson was always busy, but Paul's spirited resistance made sure that half chances remained just that. The Quakers could complain about the active role played by the woodwork, especially when Steve Tuppling's shot had the keeper beaten. But it was Hartlepool's determination that proved the strongest force, leaving Knowles to reflect that a bumper 5,000 crowd might have gone home wondering if an all-too-rare Darlington bubble had burst already. Every time there seems to be a revival, you know, they seem to get the rug pulled from under the feet, and he's kind of happened a wee bit tonight like that, you know, but uh, I don't think they should be too disappointed, you know, because they saw the second half. I mean, we didn't really play as well as we can even the second half, but we got amongst them. And to be honest with you, I came here tonight thinking we were going to murder them, and we didn't get going, to be honest with you. And full credit to Billy and the lads, because uh, I thought they battled well, really, considering. Yes, we've picked up. We've been playing well, quite well, you know, without a little bit, without the luck, really. And tonight, um, I thought Lady Luck smiled on us a little bit at times in the second half. So things are turning around a little bit. People always say that the one thing Hartlepool needs more than anything else is money, but really results must make a tremendous difference to the morale at the club. Results are the biggest thing at the moment. I mean, money comes second. Uh, but there's, if we keep going as we are, we, we're working very hard, you see. The lads, uh, there's a good spirit there. And that, that's a good start for us. In the firing line, but now it's his turn to go on to the attack as he searches for the business to help keep Hartlepool solvent. Hello. Alan Stevenson, Massacal United. Hello, Hello, Alan. Sit down, please. Thank you. Well, what I've come round really to try and interest you in uh, the schemes we've got organised for Hartlepool United Football Club. Well, um, Stevenson arrived at Hartlepool on loan from Rotherham with 750 first team games behind him, the bulk of them with Burnley. Now, as the league's only player commercial manager, he has to go into his new hometown, attracting match sponsors, selling both space in the programme and advertising round the ground. Yes, you can have it round the goal. Stevenson will soon be moving out of his present office. He agrees with the club's new directors that it's an unnecessary expense. Alan was first involved on the commercial side at Burnley and knows how tough a job he faces at Hartlepool. And everyone who meets him is impressed by his enthusiasm for tasks ranging from organising the lottery to compiling the programme. It's quite hectic at the moment, but uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. If a commercial manager sat about doing nothing all day, there's some, we've got a problem somewhere along the line. But you can devote enough time to each job, can you? Yes, yes. I, I, um, at the moment, I don't seem to be able to devote enough time to any of them, but um, there, are, there are things that definitely need more time than others. Uh, with training for the matches, um, as I say, I'm getting on, I don't need to train every day. And being a goalkeeper, you don't need to do a lot of running like the rest of the lads do. So I, I can spend more time in the office. And uh, it's a priority job now that we do try and generate some funds for the club. Which job comes first in your own mind? I am still a professional footballer. But Alan was the first player to arrive at the ground for yesterday's game against Torquay. Before he could start thinking about three vital points, he had a prize raffle to organise for half-time, and there were the match programmes to distribute okay, to his young team of sellers. Right, can you get a... Sort your stuff out. Can you count those? Yeah. Okay. As your um, how much does your pre-match routine these days okay. vary from during most of your career? Well, it varies quite considerably now to what I used to do before. It was just an easy morning and a relaxing lunch, and then just a gentle uh, jog down to the ground. But now um, the day starts on about 12ish. Try and get everything organised on the ground so I can set a deadline for two o'clock. And you can honestly say that when you get out there on the pitch, the commercial side is completely out of your mind? I would say so, yes. I need 100% concentration for goalkeeping, and once that starts slipping, 
he, he creates problems. Few problems for Poole yesterday, especially when Graham Headley's corner was headed on by Barry Wardrobe and leading scorer Kevin Dixon was on hand to put Hartlepool ahead after eight minutes. Three points against Torquay would give Poole the luxury of forgetting re-election. And a minute later, Brian Honour was bundled over in the box and Poole had a penalty. As Graham Headley slammed the ball home, his goalkeeper was probably thinking how success on the pitch will help his commercial aims. My, my main priority is to get the club solvent, uh, to generate enough funds, whereas we can uh, step forward instead of just hanging from crisis to crisis. Generate enough money to buy players and um, just get the club on a sound financial footing. When I first arrived, I thought we'd have a very amateurish image in the town and I've tried to project a more professional approach uh, get people interested in this and let them know it's run on the right lines now. Torquay seldom troubled Poole once the home side had gone three up but Stevenson's afternoon was spoiled by Torquay's late consolation goal blasted in by Andy O'Dell. And Alan wears that green jersey. Clean sheets, not balance sheets, are his only concern. The 90 minutes on a Saturday afternoon are my relaxation period. Uh, because basically I enjoy playing football and this is my priority at the moment, on a Saturday that is. What do you think is the tougher job, keeping goal for Hartlepool or being the commercial manager? Oh, being the commercial manager by far.